All right, today we have a 2000 Volvo V70 XC all-wheel drive. Got a four-speed transmission called a 5042 LE. And just to let you know, the big brother to this one uh, is the five-speed version, which is the 5550 SN. Okay, so this customer had the car towed here because uh, when she was in the middle of driving it, uh, she said it wasn't shifting right or it wasn't shifting above 30, something to that effect. So she had it towed here. We got in the car, drove it, really didn't feel much. Scanned it, had a code, one code for shift solenoid two hydraulic fault. Uh, so we called her up, got a little more background, and she said, usually you gotta drive it for a little while uh, before it starts to act up, so we let it run. Uh, honestly, didn't feel much wrong with it, so we put it up in the air and, and we wanted to sample the fluid and it was just like gray metal fluid coming out of this thing, so we figured something's going on. Uh, so we got the okay, uh, also based on the code, the hydraulic fault, uh, we got the okay to pull it and tear it down. So we're dealing with actually, I'll show you exactly what happened, which is a common problem. The case, the main case of the transmission is no good. And I already have the uh, replacement case, which I'll give you a shot of both, what it looks like bad and good. Uh, also, uh, we'll go over another couple of common issues with the uh, forward drum. And got three sprigs in this unit. We'll go over clutches, open the pump. And let me get a little closer and we'll get started. All right, so pretty much what happened here, this is the underdrive drum. These are the underdrive clutches and steels, which are no good. Okay, so pretty much what happened with this, let me just show you my replacement drum. This is my replacement underdrive drum. There is a bearing here. And there's two rings that ride, um, the two rings go in the case. And this sits in the case and the reduction band goes around it. And this bearing actually had failed and it took the drum out and it ground the case up. All right, so I'm actually gonna, I'll probably take the camera off the tripod to show you. But I'm not sure how well you can be able to see this, but this is all ground down to nothing, um, and that is the problem right there, which is making all kinds of metal. I'll give you a better shot of the, of the good and the bad, and this is the replacement case that I have. And this is, in, you know, of course, in real nice shape here. You got two rings that ride in to apply that underdrive, and there is also a sprig that sits back there. Okay, this is the inner race for the spray here. All right, so that's what we're dealing with, the uh, um, bearing failure, which took the uh, case out. So we've got, a, we've got a replacement case and a replacement underdrive drum. Uh, all right, so let's start with here. All right, so this basically goes through the back of the unit where the back cover is. Okay, which is right here, and you have your bunch of sealer, uh, seals that go here in the case. I'll show you that as well. All right, so you have your forward and your direct clutches here. Okay, these are the forwards, which are no good, and the seals too. All right, again, pretty common problem for the forwards to go bad. And a common issue, two common issues with this drum Number one, I'm going to check this to make sure it's okay because the clutches are bad, uh, but I check every one anyway, is the drum likes to crack around the weld here, okay, and another problem which I've seen more than once on these units is this drum, this shaft actually snaps completely off and the car does not move. When a drum cracks here, you may slip on takeoff, slipping forward. Okay, and this transmission has three sprigs. This one here, you got a ring gear here, and a sprig on the other side. This is your low sprig. Okay, this is your intermediate sprig here. 
and you have your underdrive spray. And the underdrive spray, of course, can go in either way, but you have grooves cut into the lugs here, and these grooves are going to face up. And also, there is, which is very, very easy to miss, there is this tiny, this tiny anti-rattle clip that goes uh, against one of the case lugs for the underdrive spray. So if you take this out, just make sure you look for it. Um, actually, what I'll do when I give you a close-up shot of the case, I'll show you where that would be located so you know to look for it. Okay, uh, one second again, please. Okay, continuing with the clutches. Uh, so those were um, the forward and the direct here are your intermediates. And these are like the coast or maybe the overrun, if you will. They go in the pump area, and here is your low reverse. These are in real good shape. And of course your reduction band that rides on the underdrive drum. This I'm going to change. You know there's different versions. On the 5550SN there's different versions. There's an aftermarket, and then there's the Borg Warner. So I definitely would not go with the aftermarket, uh, yeah, not go with the aftermarket band. All right, here is the one main planetary here. Uh, you got to also watch these bushings, okay, because um, if this thing would get, you know, a little hot, these bushings tend to spin out, so you want to watch that. All right, here is the all-wheel drive diff, and this will come right off. You got a seal right here where the axle goes. I'm going to be changing the seal, and all this red crap here, I'm going to be cleaning all that out. All this here, I'm going to clean all that out. Alright, so this little valve body, I got a lot of parts in this little valve body. And behind this plate, you got some accumulators. Alright, you got a. a Pretty much just like an EPC solenoid, a couple of shift solenoids, and a lockup solenoid. But you got to be um, careful with this thing. This little sucker's got a lot, a lot of parts in it. So if you're going to open this up, I'm definitely going to open it up because of basically the case was just getting ground up, and and I just want to make sure that everything is going to be okay. Uh, all right. So you know what I want to do? I want to give you a shot of. Uh, in a minute though, so let's take a look at this here. So this is the pump which houses the two sets of clutches. This thing is is very hard to install. Pretty much when it's all together, uh, you got to put the, the washer on, you got to spline the spray into the two sets of clutches, and of course you can't take the pump and turn it over because it's going to fall apart, so I like prop the, uh, at that point I got the uh, the transmission together and I believe I also have, because it's chamfered, I also have the bell housing is on without the pump. All right, then I, and then I, you gotta kind of lean, you know, let me just show you this way. I kind of prop the transmission up so it's kind of like leaning like this when it's all together. And then you gotta just gently slide the pump and get it into the splines, a uh, little, bit of a pain to do but it is doable and then uh, just be very once it's in you know you don't want to really start banging on it because um, you don't want it to, to you know to come out of the spray here so once I get it in I use a couple of bolts and just very gently go side to side and as long as the pump is going in smooth and there's no problem and then when it gets close to being in then I just kind of give it a push and it goes in but it's not uh, it's not that easy to do okay so here is the washer 
All right, we got some springs and the snack ring, piston, and another piston. All right, and then you have all the bolts in here. You got one bolt here and three on the outside to separate and check the pump. So I think it will do that. All right, so let me just uh, get set up for that and we'll look at the pump. I'll show you the cases and I guess we can just um, end the video right there. Okay, on this cover, you got an accumulator here. So of course, all the accumulator, all the seals, very important, I'm gonna change those. Uh, all right, so let me just get set up for that and I will be right back. Okay. You gotta be careful when you're lifting it off from the pump because everything's like peened over in it and you can easily crack the aluminum. All right, so these are all the inside ones. The one on the very inside that's all by itself is a little different from the rest, but I mean, you can just look at that and tell that it's not the same. So just note where that goes. All right, we got three here. So here is the stator. You got a pump plate. And there is your pump. O ring is going to be changed. All right. So you want to. These are usually pretty good pumps here. All right. This looks good. Pocket looks good. And the gears look okay. All right, so that's good. All right, I actually saved some pieces of the bearing that I wanted to show you. For the bearing that blew up. Again, pretty common problem here. All right, so this is pretty much this uh, 5042LE. Not really a Bad trains to work on. Uh, valve body, you just gotta be careful again with that. A lot of, a lot of pieces for that. All right, so what I wanna do now, cases. Oh, also here in that end cover where that forward drum goes, you got all your seals. One, two, three, four seals here. And uh, right here, right here you have a case, case seal. So you want to make sure you put that in the case. I don't know if that came out before, if, if it showed up on camera again, but these seals here. Uh, one, two, three, four, that's for the back cover. And you have a couple of tubes that go in here as well. And for the reduction band, your piston goes right in here. All right, so let me uh, show you the differences of the, the ground up case versus the good one. Just give me a second, let me uh, get the camera off the tripod. And we will continue. Also, the linkage. Linkage is 
goes up here with the park gear, uh, comes through here uh, by the valve body. Um, little, little tricky to figure out. Uh, I usually just snap a picture of it with the, I mean, I've done plenty of these, so I know how it goes, but if you ever have to take it apart uh, to get to, you have to take the linkage out to get this section out of the trans, and you definitely want to look at, of course, this, because it's so common that that go bad. Uh, so maybe you want to just take a shot with the cell phone, a lot of little brackets and, and stuff like that uh, that have to go in. So it can get a little confusing. All right, so let me just get the uh, camera off the tripod. I want to show you these cases. All right, well, I'm hoping this is coming out okay so you can, you can see it. It's all ground down, you know, where the rings ride. And then, of course, is the bad case. Here is the replacement case in much better shape. And also that anti-rattle clip uh goes right in this area right here okay and right here is the band anchor which you can see the from the outside so you want to just make sure that you do not take that out or you will lose the reduction band and the reduction band i believe is i'd have to check an application short but i believe it's on in reverse and first second and third so the car may not move too good if um if you take that out. Some people think that's maybe a fill or a check and they've done that before even with the five-speed versions. Alright, so there's the case, the bad one and the good one. Alright, so once again we got a 2000 Volvo V70 XC 5042LE and we found uh, the bearing in between the uh, underdrive drum and the case had gone bad and took the case out. Uh, fairly common problem. Uh, we've seen this before. So I'm just going to get going on this because uh, this lady takes, um, thinks she drives uh, pretty far each day to go to work. So, all right. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.